Hi, I'm Mark Stevens with the SAS certification team, and we're going to do a deep dive into a performance-based SAS certification exam. So I've started, I'm midpoint in the exam. It's already, it's already begun, and if you haven't seen uh, the intro video that we have on our certification website on sas.com, I'd go back and check the intro video. It tells you how to pick your user interface and size your windows to get you all started. So this is actually past that point, and now we're actually looking at our, our first project in the, in the exam. Now, is this an actual test question? No, I'm not giving away any content, but it is the same uh, concept, level, difficulty, uh, same, same idea of what, what one of these questions would look like. So, let's get into it. I see the project. I see what data set I'm going to be using. It gives me some advice on how to save the file. Uh, what data set I'm reading, what one I'm going to be creating, and then we see a character variable that we're going to be using, right? So a sales cat variable that's going to be used to subset all of the observations in the data set into uh, different groups, class A, double A, AA, and triple A. So I see I can save the program. It gives me an idea, so I can go in here, gives me a name, so I can go in and find that location, the cert folder, programs. It suggests I save it as program 01, so now I've got it saved. Always a good idea to uh, check out your data first, know what you're dealing with. So I'm gonna look in my libraries here and I see I'm working in SAS Help. So I come down to the shoes library towards the bottom of the list. I should have picked something at the top of the list. Pop it open and I get a quick view of what that data looks like. I can see my character variables, my numeric variables. I can see the values of different observations. I'm going to be working with this sales variable to do the subsetting, and I can see I've got values less than 100,000. I've got some values over 100,000, so I can start to see how it's going to subset out. So I get into my program, and we start writing away, right? So I'm going to start right off by creating that uh, Work dot sales range data set, and I'm going to create it from using my set statement the SAS help dot shoes data set. Now I get into the subsetting. I see that I am going to be creating a sales cat variable, and I'm going to be subsetting it based on value of sales. So I think if statement. And if you have another way to solve the problem, that's fine. On the base exam, we're not looking at your code. We're only looking at the results that you get to give you some freedom in terms of how you choose to solve the solution. Let me point out the advanced exam, uh, we do care, so we are gonna be looking at the code, but in terms of what I'm doing right now, base exam, um, we don't look at the code. So here I go. If we say sales is less than 100,000, then my sales cat variable is going to be equal to class A. I can then go on with a, if that statement is not true, go on to my next with an else if sales is less than, and there's no reason in here why if I chose to use a less than symbol instead, uh, except it's inclusive, isn't it? So I want to do a less than or equal to 200,000. Then sales cat equals class double A. And then finally close it out with if sales are this time, let's go greater than 200,000, then Sales cat equals class triple A. All right, so we've got some code. I'm going to save the program. We'll go ahead and run it, and we'll see what we get for results. It takes me to my output data set. I check my log, right? It's always a good programming practice. Check your log. There's no errors in the log, so that's a plus. But then we also want to check our results, and I can see that we created a sales cat variable. And initially, I see lots of values. They're all class A, even some values that are over 
the 100,000 mark, which should have been class AA. So even though my code ran without a mistake, um, it's not giving us maybe the results that we expected. Some of you can see clearly already why that is. We'll build for that. Let me show you a few extra things here. So like maybe I want to investigate that data set a little bit more. So I do a proc freak the cursor was hiding a misspelling proc freak what am I doing there we go data equals work dot sales range and let's take a look at what's going on with um, my sales cat very well. I would expect that I should have three levels. If, if, if things worked out the way we want, then I should have ended up with three levels. But I only have one. So something, either we have an odd programming situation here or uh, something's not quite right. So maybe we take a look with a proc means, investigate a little further. And what we're going to do is still look at that uh, work dot sales range data set and let's look at the uh, let's look at the minimum specifically let's look at the minimum and maximum values you can see a whole bunch of context sensitive help popping up there while I'm doing it it's all available to you in the exam because we try to make it as real world as possible and we're going to look at that for the sales if I can type the sales variable what, what are the minimum values? Should I expect three different category levels? And why not, while I'm at it, add in a class statement uh, for sales cat so we can see what the minimum maximum values are within each group of sales cat? Run it. See, I'm trying to get my indentation just right. Just doesn't matter, but it makes me feel better. I'm only getting that one value of class A, right? And I can see my minimum value at 325 and my maximum value is over a million. So it's not subsetting correctly. So something is not right with my code. And those, a lot of folks maybe have already seen it. Um, problem being, if I look at that, uh, let me find my output data set. If I look at that sales cat variable, I can pull this up, it's only seven characters long, right? And sales cat AAA is nine characters long. I didn't tell SAS how long that variable was supposed to be. So in my first if statement line, that's the first place where it occurs in the code, SAS set the variable to be seven characters long to match the class underscore A. Therefore, later in the program, it truncated the length. So what I, one easy way to fix it right off the bat would be to go in with a length statement and define the length of my sales cat variable to be nine characters long. And I use the dollar sign because it's a character variable. Now, if I save that program and give it a run, let's see if we get some better results. Ah, now I've got three categories, right? I've got the class A, double A, triple A. In my means procedure, I can see my minimum and my maximum values. Then they are within range, right? Class A should be all under 100,000 double A between 100 and 200, right? So I'm starting to see better results. I have more confidence that my code is good. I check my log, right? I don't have any errors in my log. Now I feel like I'm at a place where, okay, now I can be confident that I've written the correct code, I've met the requirements of the project, and I can start looking at the questions. So now I pop open my first question, and it says, how many observations are classified into the class A group? So in my code, if I didn't already have a proc frequency written, now I would write one. And I would check my results, and I see, OK, class A, frequency count, I have 288 observations. Now in the exam, cut and paste is not going to work. So you're going to have to type the 288. I'm sorry, but that's just the nature of the secure environment. No cutting and pasting. Go to my second question. And I say, what is the mean value of observations in the sales cat equals class AA group? So I have a means procedure that I ran, and I've got a minimum and a maximum, but I don't have a means. So I can go in and 
you know, if I don't know the keyword, uh, it does say mean, so maybe I would guess that it's mean, but if I type, you know, average, right, I don't get the highlight, I don't get the context sensitive help, so maybe that's not the right one. I go in with mean, ah, I'm a little more comfortable that mean is the right word. Let me give it one more run. We get a mean value, class AA, I see 135, 126. We also say round the answer to the nearest whole number. Just trying to give you some comfort level in terms of what to, how far should I round this. So if I go in here and I put in 135, 127, I guess that is technically the exact right answer. I said round it to the nearest whole number. But at the same time, I'm testing you on your SAS coding skills. I'm not testing you on your rounding skills. So if you were to have answered it at 135, 126, you're still gonna get the right answer. If you forgot to round and you uh, put in 126.88, still gonna get the right answer. Uh, we really wanna focus on making sure that we've tested your SAS skills. And you can see in the code, right, we've read data in, we've written data out, we've had to do a length statement, uh, subsetting, or not subsetting, but uh, if statements that we've used to, uh, with assignment statements to create a variable, proc freak, proc means, we've demonstrated a lot of good SAS skills in this one project. And there's, you know, I, the link statement, I'm sure there's folks out there that are thinking, well, I could have solved this differently without a link statement. And you're right, you could have, and you still would have been perfectly valid. So that's really what we're going for with these performance-based exams, is to make them real world and to really make sure that we are doing a valid measurement of your, of your SAS skills without necessarily doing a traditional format test. So if you like the video, please subscribe to the SAS Users channel, give me a like on the video, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching and good luck on your SAS exam.